Hello. For this video, we're going to go over how to saw using a jeweler's saw. And I'm going to demonstrate on, this is actually um, laminate countertop samples, but it's the same whether you're doing something like that or if you're doing um, a cut metal piece with 18 to 20 gauge um, metal as well. Anything much thicker than 18 gauge, you may have to, to change a little bit or anything much thinner than 20 but we work primarily with 18 to 20, so that's going to apply to the same thing. Um, again, this is just um, a sample from a countertop tile, and we had a bunch donated, so that's what I'm going to use for this particular example. Tools that you need for this, you need to have a jeweler saw, and jeweler saw, and we're going to also need a jeweler saw blade, and with the saw blade, there's another video on just stringing um, the saw blade, but this is pretty much how to attach that or put that saw blade in. You want to make sure that the teeth, they're very tiny, but they need to be going, pointing out and down. Tighten the first clamp, and then you press in so that you make the distance between the parts narrower, so you press in on the handle, and I see I've got it on the table there. So I'm going to narrow that gap, and it should make a high-pitched twang when it's plucked. So that's, that's my strong saw blade. Um, if you are needing to cut out an inside shape, for example, on this one, that inside of that feather is cut out. If you're needing to do something like that, you actually need to drill a hole in the inside pierced area, and then you would string your saw blade through that hole and then tighten it, and then you would you do the rest of the steps. So you'd have to string that through there. If you don't drill a hole first, you have to cut through the side and then it's no longer pierced. It's just kind of a little inlet. So I'm gonna go ahead and string my blade because I've already cut that piece out. I'm gonna cut another contrasting piece because this is gonna be layered. So this is another piece of tile that was donated to me. And I'm going to take my my drawing, this is what I'm cutting, and this particular piece I need to cut the very outside edge of the black shape. And for this I need to attach it and I want to make it so that I'm able to get the, um, the most out of the tile possible. Straight up and down it's going to go off, it's too large. But I'm going to rubber cement on the back. Rubber cement I think it's preferable to glue stick because it just rubs off, but do you need to be careful if you're working with younger folks that um, may not think about their safety and make sure nobody um, breathes that in. I need to shift that until I can get all of it, so I can kind of fold that over so I can see. You can also hold it up to the light, which doesn't work for this video, but if you hold it up toward the light you can see through and make sure that it's going to fit on there. If you've got a particular um, metal piece or tile piece that has a particular design, you may want to put that piece over that area that you really like. But if it's um, not got an area that's very important to you, you just want to make sure you're using as little of your material as possible so you can continue to use that for other things. So I'm going to let that set up there just a little bit and I'm going to set up my other tools for it. I need my bench pin, which is just a, it's a wooden piece. In this case, it's a 1x4 that we've cut kind of a keyhole shape for. If you're working with very small things, you may need a smaller bench pin. And I'm going to C-clamp that down, so I also need a C-clamp. And we're going to loosen that just a little bit. I'm going to C-clamp that bench pin down. I need to make it nice and secure so that it doesn't just flip off of there. And then I also need a piece of wax. In this case, I'm going to use a piece of old candle. I've got my string, or my, my strong saw blade, and I'm going to take the wax over that blade so that I lubricate that blade so it makes it less likely to snag. And then my piece that I'm cutting, I put over that, um, the, the two points that come out, I want to have that kind of straddle it, so across both of those. When you're sawing, it's helpful to have a lower chair or stool. You don't want to sit really high looking down 
because you tend to angle your blade too much. You want to be able to hold your saw more straight up and down. You don't want to have a death grip on your saw um, because that's just going to make your hand really tired and not be very helpful. So I'm going to angle first. I'm going to come in toward the piece, angle, and then as soon as I get it started, I'm going to hold it straight up and down and slowly draw that through. I shouldn't hear sounds like that shouldn't be really coarse sounds and you want to saw so that if you make a mistake you're airing to the part that cannot possibly be your project try not to cut into your project also notice when I stopped to demonstrate or to, to point at things I brought my saw down and I let it kind of dangle there but I'm, I'm propping it up with my thumb I don't want to do anything um, to make a sudden movement that will crack or break my saw blade in half and long full draw and then you continue to go around there I'm going to back it up so that I can do the other side if you need to go very far you've got to be careful you may not want to actually drag it through there you may just want to loosen your saw blade take it out restring your saw blade so I'm not going to demonstrate cutting the entire piece I'm just going to do part of it so I'm going to come in from the other side so I can show you how to make turns um, so I'm going to come in and I want to turn right there. So if I want to turn, I need to go bring my saw blade up and down while I'm turning it and I'm not moving forward. So if you think of it as like a person getting ready to march up and down while turning, marching in place, and then once you turn the direction you want, then start moving forward. Make sure you're not getting your finger right next to the saw blade. That's going to not be a pleasant experience for you. Now I'm kind of sawing in a wrong direction, so I want to turn that. Again, I want to keep that braced, straddling the wood. If you cut into the wood a little bit, that's okay. So again, I want to, if I need to change directions, I just release my metal a little bit, turn it, release it with my, my left hand. If it starts getting caught a lot, you want to go back, put more wax on it. It's better if you don't talk while sawing. You tend to move when you don't mean to and look away. So here again, I'm at a corner, up and down while turning it, and then moving forward again. You get used to the sound, by the way. Now, as I'm going over this, you'll see some of my drawing is starting to get a little bit lighter. I right, guess it's not a drawing, it's actually a photocopy. You want to make sure that you're not trying to do this on a drawing that is just done in pencil. It should be either in ballpoint or really fine sharpie or other fine drawing marker or a photocopy works as well. Um, you need to have the drawing exactly the way you want the final piece so that you are cutting right on that illustration. Um, if you're not able to complete this in one setting, don't try and put your saw away with your project on it. Again, loosen, bring it all the way down, loosen your saw blade, remove it from the clamp so that you're able to take that off of there. Okay, so I've not completely cut that out. I've cut part of it. And the next time I start, I could start from a different spot if I want to. I don't have to retrace my steps. I can just come into a new spot. I hope that helps.